from February all the way up to August, I've been doing my master thesis for my mechanical engineering degree. The main purpose of this thesis was to do a Python application that utilizes the OpenGL module to display mechanical parts and then while well, applying some transformations to them. During this six to seven months, I have a lot of trouble learning OpenGL since it's mainly coded in C++ and not in Python. So I decided I will we'll make a series about what I've learned during these six months. I have published a video about the result of making a STL viewer on Python, but I decided I'll make a series on how to actually make a more advanced application that will help you visualize a STL file, as well as the triangles points and then the outline of each triangle. It's an advanced project, which I highly recommend you try yourself. I've learned a lot of during this period. So yeah, hope you enjoy this series. It will be four or five, four or five videos. I'm not sure yet, depending on how crazy I get. So enjoy watching and thank you. Welcome. This video is the first part of our advanced Python project series. Now this video it focuses on how to create a empty scene by using OpenGL and Pygame, as well as rendering a basic triangle, then a outline triangle, finishing with a group of triangles. So with that being said, enjoy the video and let's go! The easiest way to create a OpenGL scene is actually with Pygame, since it provides some built-in functionalities for it. So we will import Pygame as well as some local variables in it and then import our OpenGL module with .gl and .glu for the utility functionalities. Now, to create our scene, we have first to initialize it. Since we are using Pygame, we have to initialize our Pygame module with pygame.init and then creating some frame-related variable such as FPS and a clock class provided from the Pygame module to handle everything related to the frames per second. Now to create our OpenGL window, we use Pygame's setMode function, specifying our window size, and we set our display to a double buff OpenGL. Now what does this double buff OpenGL mean? In a way, double buff stands for double buffering, which is a technique used in computer graphics to prevent flickering and in a way to create a smoother animation, where OpenGL specifies that you want to create a OpenGL rendering context within the Pygame window. So by combining these two, basically means that you want a smooth Pygame window in a OpenGL context. Now, since we want to project a 3D object on a 2D screen, we need to set up the perspectives for our 3D scene, which is done with the group perspective. It defines the field of view, aspect ratio, and then the near and far clipping plane. Then we have to define our background color of our scene. With the GL clear color, it takes as input a RGBA color code between 0 and 1. If you don't know how to choose a RGBA color code, you can use online sites well, to help you choose a more specific color. Next, we enter the main loop that will continuously run our OpenGL scene. We define a running variable in order to control our while loop. Inside this loop, we check for Pygame events, specifically for a quit event. If the user closes the window, we set the running variable to false, which will then exit the loop. Now we clear the color buffer with gl.clear in a way to update each time our current frame. All the drawing will happen in this section, but since we are doing an empty scene for now, we will just leave it empty. After supposedly drawing all our objects, we update the display with the changes we've made. Then we set the window caption to display the current FPS to know how heavy the rendering is for our computer. And we control the frame rate with the clock dot ticks FPS. Now we run our code. And well, after fixing the slight error I made early on on the pygame.quit, the condition, we want to actually check if it's 
a quit event. If it is, then we just close the window. And after running our code, we can see that we successfully generated a empty scene. The title of the window is every time the number of FPS limited to 60 FPS being more than enough. Now this was the first part of the video explaining how to make a empty scene. Now the second part consists of drawing a basic object on our scene. Now to display a basic triangle on our scene, I went ahead and created a new Python file. And I copy the exact same code we used previously in a separate file to make it more easily understandable. Now after initializing our scene, I usually prefer to define the object right below it, so before the main loop. A triangle is defined with three vertices. Each vertex is defined with a x, y, and z coordinate. And we actually shift our triangle along the z axis to actually view it, since initially our OpenGL camera, or rather our point of view, will be at the origin of our coordinate system. So x, y, and z will be 0, 0, and 0. By shifting our object, we will be able to view it, despite the camera being in the origin of our coordinate system. Here is a quick visualization with GeoGebra. So now if we put our triangle at the z equals 0 coordinate, we can see that our point of view is aligning with all vertices, which means that we will not be able to view our triangle. Although if we shift our triangle along the z-axis by minus 5, we can clearly view it. Now this out of the way, the next step is to actually draw our object in our while loop. The traditional way is to use a gl begin and gl end, specifying the type of object we want to render. For instance, it's a triangle, so we will use the gl triangles. You can also draw other types of objects like a quad, line, point, etc. Now to actually render our triangle, we will first have to specify its color and then its coordinate. We use the GL color 3F to specify the color of our triangle. We can choose anything we want, but it's still a RGB color code between 0 and 1. Now to actually render our triangle and its vertices on our scene, we have to render each vertices independently with a GL vertex 3FV. This means that OpenGL recognized the input as a 3D vector. In our case, it will be a 3D vertex vector. And we do that for the three vertices we have of our triangle. We run our code and we will see that, lo and behold, we have a triangle on our screen. Now this is a very, very basic shape, but if you want, you can change the color of it by changing the RGBA color code to one. For all the three components, we rerun our code and we will see that this time we have a white triangle. Now a pretty cool effect would be to add a contour to our triangle to make it a bit more visually pleasing. To do so, you have to actually call another function called the GL polygon mode. The first parameter of this function will be a GL front and back, meaning we want to target the function to both the front and the back of our face. And the second parameter is the mode we want to display. So it's either a GL line, meaning that we just want to display the contour of our object, or GL fill, meaning we want to fill up our object. Now imagine by combining these two modes, this results in a pretty cool display. So we will first draw our filled triangle. And after drawing this filled triangle, we will then draw a contour on it by changing the GL polygon mode to a GL line and then setting the color contour to black. This results in a pretty cool triangle, a very basic but cool triangle, like you can see here. Now you might not be able to see it very clearly since it's a very small line width. Now we can increase the width of lines we are rendering in our scene, calling the GL line width function. This function takes as input a integer, which is the width of our line, basically. One is the default value, all the way up to whatever you want. Now for our example, we will set it to 4. Now we can clearly see the outline of the triangle. If you, for some reason, want to increase it to 40, you can also do that. It won't be as visually pleasing, but it's still an outline. 
we will set it to 5 for now. And that's basically how you can display a triangle with an outline. This will be the base for our STL file later on in a future video. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to actually draw or render a group of triangles. It's actually very easy. All you have to do is, well, creating a new file called multiple triangles, copying the exact same code we just wrote in the previous script. Now, since we want to display a group of triangles, instead of defining one triangle with three vertices, we will define three triangles, each having three vertices. We have to change our for loop since we want to display each vertex of each triangle. We will first iterate through our triangles and then for each triangle we will iterate through each vertex and then join with the GL vertex 3FV. Now that's all you have to do in order to display a group of triangle. For both the GL fill and the GL line, the polygon mode. And if we run our code, we will see that we successfully displayed our three defined triangle. Now this is all you need to know in order to display a STL file, but this will be the subject of our next video. In the next video you will learn how to actually import a STL file, as well as using the mouse to rotate this STL file in various angles. So yeah, thank you for watching, and peace!